Welcome back to Tracy and Gracie Becoming. This is episode 28 where we're going to talk about becoming gift givers. Yeah, tis the season. <laughs> I was just going to say that. Um, so I think it's super interesting to talk about why we give gifts and talk yeah. about some of our favorite gifts uh-huh. and um, give just the listeners hopefully some ideas and inspiration um, because we are less than two weeks away from Christmas. Um, Before we do that, I'd love to hear how your weekend was last weekend. Oh, would you? (laughs) (laughs) Mine was good. Um, I didn't have a whole lot going on. I feel like the last couple weekends, I have been really putting an emphasis on getting my program ready. So everything's kind of been in work mode which is good and exciting, but same here. I was able to carve out a little bit of time to play pickleball Mm -hmm. getting better. Uh, I was a little bit disappointed that we it's, it has kind of a ladder play a little bit, a ladder play setup to it. So, um, this was the first week where the instructor really kind of started to, put people based on their ability in certain courts. So I started at the highest court, which I was excited about, but I was out of the four of us, I was probably the most novice player. And so I quickly got moved down and it was so interesting to like, just really see my mind and see how I was spinning out and how angry I got that I was like, (laughs) <laughs> yeah downgraded yeah she came back and I was like how was it and she was like it's fine <laughs> I was like, okay do you want to elaborate on that <laughs> I just get so frustrated with myself but it is an opportunity to really get better and if you can choose to look at it as you know, this is my opportunity to get better or I'm horrible. Right. And like, I definitely saw just my progress and I'm only (laughs) there for an hour. And so, and I haven't had any time to go back and practice in between lessons. So it's just a leave for fun. (laughs) I know, but at my age, there's such few things that you get to be competitive about. And so I take it very seriously. Yeah. Yeah, so it's fun. I'm hoping I can get out this weekend and just play before my next lesson. Yeah. I think it would help immensely. We also saw our friends that are here visiting from Australia. Mm-hmm. They're kind of on a, not a world tour, but a yeah. <laughs> U.S. tour kind of. Yeah, it's so interesting that that is just part of their culture. They mm-hmm. travel a lot. Um, every four to five years, they do like this two month long trip. Mm -hmm. And so we're part of that. Yeah. They used to live here, so Mm -hmm. it's easy for them to make this a stop, but yeah, we usually get to see them when they do. So, Mm -hmm. so that was fun. Um, and they actually wanted to meet at the mall of America and I have not been to the mall of America in so long and it's changed so much. It's beautiful. It, I was actually quite pleased yeah. um, with the experience. It was quiet. Yeah. I mean, for being the... I mean, it was, yeah, it was like middle of the day on a weekday, but on but a Friday. It is, but yeah, that it was quieter than, yeah. Yeah, it was weird. It is, it's so weird to think about other people's perspectives of the Mall of America. Like, for us, like, we obviously are able to go all of the time. Like when I was in middle school or like high school, that was something that we would go do for fun. And it's just so funny. Like now I have college friends that when they're visiting me in Minnesota, they're like, can we stop at the Mall of America? I'm like, sure. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But you forget. Yeah. That it's like a big attraction for people to come to Minnesota for. We totally take it for granted. Mm -hmm. So, um, And then I got my Christmas cards done. Our second round of Christmas cards done. I had created, I wanted to have a back to the front (laughs) and I neglected to put the back on the front. So what did you do? Well, so I tried (laughs) to figure out alternatives and 
that did not look very good. So she had I really wanted Griffin. to have, well, I wanted to have kind of a recap of our 2023 mm -hmm. included. And so I printed out just on, you know, eight and a half by 11, which then required some cutting, which then of course it wasn't even. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And, and then it looks, was the wrong way. And it looks horrible. And so at the end of the day, <laughs> I'm like, okay, I want this to look nice. I've put a lot of time into this. So I went back to Canva where I made the cards and contacted customer service, told them that I neglected to put the back on it. And I just wanted to see what they would do. And I am a big customer of Canva's. I mm -hmm. order a lot of things through them. And so they were very kind and they said, we would love to replace your order um, and we will two day expedite it. So the second set of cards are here. And I was thinking, <laughs> Oh, this will be perfect, because we'll be able to get the envelopes all prepped. And by the time the new cards come, we'll just stuff them and get them out in the mail. And no, nobody, not one person. There's four of us that live in this house. I've asked every single person to please pitch in and help with the Christmas cards. And they just came yesterday. The second set, the envelopes yeah. have been here for two weeks. I heard that we needed the labels printed out and... And so what part of that did you do? You said dad was doing that. So the labels have been... The label, the label list has been created. The labels have not been printed. The stamps have not been put on it. The return address stamp has not been done. And the cards have not been put in the envelope. Yeah. And I'm sure I will do all of those things, plus take it to the post office, <laughs> which is highly annoying. Oh, the joys of being a mom. Yeah. <laughs> but I do it because I do want to connect with all of the people that maybe we haven't seen in a while. I love, love, love getting Christmas cards. So we have, I'm sure we've already talked about this, but I have a whole wall down in our basement that displays the Christmas cards of families that we've been, we've been doing that probably for 10, 15 plus on years. On that wall? They They've been keeping been, them. They haven't 10, been on the wall years. for 15 yeah. years, but oh yeah, for sure. We've yeah. collected them. I've never, I guess, let's put it this way. So we've been married for 25 plus years. I've never thrown a Christmas card away, never. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of Christmas cards saved. Yeah, and they're all hanging up in our basement. We send out, <laughs> on average, somewhere between 200 and 225, 250. Yeah. So we do get quite a few in return. And so that's a lot of Christmas cards that we have <laughs> collected over the years. There's so a lot of Christmas cards. And you think that when we're sending that many Christmas cards out, we would think a little bit more about putting specific people on Christmas cards. <laughs> oh, really? You want to go there? <laughs> well, that was just a bad idea all around. Okay. Well, so what she's referring to is that often we take well, some years we've used a picture that has been taken on Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. My sister is a great photographer. So she usually offers to take pictures of the families that are here for Thanksgiving so that they have a nice family picture to use for a Christmas card. So this has been done and it's ironic. I always wonder if anybody puts together that several families have their Christmas card picture taken in front of our house year after year after year. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. But so anyways, we have had boyfriends and girlfriends and whatever, significant others at Thanksgiving and at the time, I felt like they should be included in the picture, <laughs> not really thinking it through. <laughs> there was no thinking through on these. I think I was thinking of it as as this is going to be a memento of Thanksgiving, <laughs> yeah. not we're going to use this picture as our Christmas card. But when it yeah. was all said and done, we probably didn't have anything better. And so twice we used a picture that had a 
boyfriend or a girlfriend in mm -hmm. the picture or both mm -hmm. that by the time the Christmas card came out, they were no longer part of the family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a nice way to say it. The first year, it was like literally the week we got our Christmas cards, the week that we were sending them out, my boyfriend dumped me. And then we sent out all these cards with us on the picture. Oh, wow, that was a great idea. Yeah. And it's so funny how it probably was very meaningful to you, but I didn't even really think that much about it but still today people will remind me of that oh any boyfriends or girlfriends ex-boyfriends yeah. or girlfriends in the picture this year so yeah so just a word of advice don't add any extras until people are married <laughs> <laughs> yeah good call so this yeah. year it is just us actually the last couple of years it has been just us because we've been to so many weddings that we've mm. had this great opportunity to take a family photo and use it as the Christmas card. So I think our last, last two, three. Mm, yeah, you're right. The last three. So anyways, those will be going out tomorrow after probably a late night of me stuffing, stamping, all the things. You um, got it. I believe in you. Thanks. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about gift giving. Yeah. And I, as we were trying to think of something that was meaningful for this time of the year, I was thinking about how gift giving, just the act of gift giving or the circumstance of gift giving can really conjure up some big emotions in people. And I think that making a decision ahead of time about how you want to feel as you are gift giving mm -hmm. can be so unbelievably helpful, so self-serving because at first blush, if you're asked, why do you give gifts? Most people will say, oh, I want to make that person feel loved or cared for or thought about. And secondly, they'll say, because it makes me feel good, mm -hmm. right? But as you are in the process of gift giving, deciding what it is that you want to buy them, going and doing the shopping, wrapping up the gift, delivering the gift. There are so many thoughts going through your head that can really rob you of the joy that gift giving should bring. And yeah. so being mindful of that, of what is it that you're thinking as you are going through the process so that you can really make the most of it. Mm -hmm. And I think it can be a very self-serving experience and it should be, you should actually be thinking about how do you want to feel? You actually cannot control how the receiver is going to feel. They're going to yeah. have their own thoughts about the gift that they're receiving. But the one thing you can control is how you feel throughout the entire process. And so yeah. that's, Regardless of what the gift is, my best advice is to decide ahead of time how you want to feel throughout the entire process. It is not lost on me that as I've gotten older, I've started to think differently about gift giving because when I was younger, I, I really let the cost of gifts drive my feelings. And so I guess what I mean by that is I watched, I grew up in a household that it was a one income household. So there weren't a lot of, there wasn't a lot of extra money to be gift giving. And so when we would buy gifts or when we would ask for gifts, what was always top of mind is how much does it cost? And it's become so apparent to me how I don't want to be thinking about that. I want to be thinking about the meaning behind the gift. Like, why am I choosing this gift? Why am I choosing to deliver this gift at this time? Or why am I choosing to wrap this gift in this way? Like really thinking about the meaning behind the gift versus the expense to me. 
And that's just ingrained in me and I catch myself doing that. And so I think that's probably why one of my values is generosity because it's not that I wasn't generous, but I think I was kept from being generous because of the way mm-hmm. I was raised in the environment I was raised in. I don't yeah. know. Does that make any sense? Yeah. yeah, it definitely makes sense. I It's funny because I feel like I have the, I have the opposite of that. I feel like when it comes to gift giving, I don't really think about the money aspect. I really feel like if it's something that I want to give to somebody, money doesn't really matter. But then on the opposite side, if it was something for me, I'm so frugal and... (laughs) Yep, you are. (laughs) If it's not on sale, I'm not buying it. But I'm so opposite for when it's giving gifts to other people. And it's probably like almost on an extreme, which is weird. I would throw like hundreds of dollars out the window just so like I can get the person a bunch of gifts and have them feel good and be excited about the things I got them. Um, but are you, so are you doing it because you want them to feel good or are you doing it because you want to feel good? It's both. I think I feel good when I see that they feel good. Okay. So it's both, I yeah. think. Yeah. But it's just interesting. I've noticed that Reason. There is really no threshold when it comes to buying for other people, but I think I'm just very conservative when it comes to buying for myself. Yeah, I can see that. Mm-hmm. Sort of, except for when all the Amazon trucks line up at the top of our driveway. And between Amazon... Are you kidding? UPS. You are the person that orders something, one at least one thing for yourself every single day followed by you there's no absolutely not absolutely not i could not even come close to getting the amount of things that you buy for yourself (laughs) my mom is literally the hardest person to buy for why because she buys everything she wants for herself (laughs) i do not see it that way of course i have been told that Rhonda weird sent a wreath a beautiful wreath yeah um, like a table decor wreath and she's and I was so appreciative of it because it smells so good. It's yeah, so gorgeous. beautiful. Yeah, it looks beautiful on our table. And she replied back saying, what do you buy the person who's so hard to buy for? I'm like, really? I'm not that hard to buy for. She's so hard to buy for. So hard to buy for. She literally will tell you that she wants something. And then if you don't get it, actually, no, you could still get it. And then she would get it anyways, thinking that you're not getting it. <laughs> and then you have to go return it. I would say because there's not a lot of things that I want. Whatever. (laughs) Bullshit. (laughs) (laughs) Honestly, it's so funny because I feel like I'm an open book. Okay, pickleball things would be an obvious. Um, What do you not have that you need for pickleball? A racket. Like my racket is, my racket is like an Amazon racket. It's just. My dad bought her a set of rackets last year, just so you know for my birthday before I ever started playing and they're oh. like beginners. I am not a beginner anymore. Okay. I am close to experienced. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What else do you need for pickleball? Shoes. Really? Yes. You have no shoes. You are supposed to have pickleball shoes because it helps limit the risk of knee injury. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you only need a racket, a ball and shoes. And I don't have Two of the three. I do have a ball. And four rackets, but okay. But they're not the right kind of racket. Okay. I'm just saying, those would be obvious Christmas gifts. Yeah, they were an obvious gift for you when we bought them. (laughs) They didn't quite meet the standard. (laughs) That's the other thing. She makes it very clear that she wants high end or not at all. So... God. (laughs) Not true. That is not true. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Sure. Okay. Speaking of, what would you say has been one of your favorite gifts? Christmas gifts? I suppose we could talk any gift because I have mine in mind and it actually wasn't given to me on Christmas. Well, what's yours? I have to think about mine. 
I, this was probably 10 years ago, I bet. Brian or Lois and Hunter gave me a pair of sunglasses that I had been wanting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were Jimmy. That's Ch- my aunt and cousin. Yes. And she used to work for an eye clinic. And I was at her office one day looking at the sunglasses and I saw this beautiful pair of aviators. They were Jimmy Choo and the um the not the rims but the frames frames the side are glittered out yeah they're like diamond encrusted yeah i mean these things are stunning and i so badly wanted them and i was like oh my gosh but i about died at the price she gets a significant discount and so i was so blown away i never ever expected them like i expected dad <laughs> to pick up on my hints but i didn't expect brian or i keep saying brian hunter and lois it's probably from their whole family but yeah. they delivered it and so that's why it sticks out in my mind because i was so surprised and i have always said bury me in those glasses because i absolutely love them and, and then they broke yeah. last weekend. Yeah. Yep. So note to self, you now have another good Christmas. <laughs> Jimmy <idea>. Choo sunglasses <laughs> that she didn't even want to buy for herself. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I'll tell you I what, take it back. There is a threshold. <laughs> <laughs> there is. I've only had to go one week so far without them. And I'm so sad. Like my eyes burn when I have to walk out into the... <laughs> outdoors without my Jimmy okay. Choo sunglasses. I'll tell dad. <laughs> yeah, so that's another obvious. Mm. Okay, how about you? We did a Nashville trip for my 21st. That was like by far the coolest gift trip that I've ever been on. Well, not ever been on, but that was probably the most meaningful and most enjoyable probably birthday gift I have ever gotten. Mm-hmm. Christmas gifts, actually Lolo's family, they got us, they had ornaments made of my grandma's china Mm -hmm. and that was like by far one of the coolest gifts, Christmas gifts I've ever gotten. Yeah, that was beautiful. That was like the year, year after she passed, Mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that next Christmas she had gotten us those ornaments made and those were beautiful. Yeah. I, I love the ornaments in memory. Yeah, we have one for grandpa too. Mm-hmm. That one's beautiful. Yeah. And then I have a little boy and a little girl, like they're in snowsuits and the little <laughs> yeah. kids are all glittered up. It's yeah. so stinking cute. That was the ornament I got when you guys were born. Mm-hmm. And I love putting that ornament on the tree mm-hmm. along yeah, with the ones cute. that are in memory of mm-hmm. people. So yeah, definitely makes the holidays special, you know, that part of the preparation and yeah. decorating and all of that. It It is interesting because I, when I was thinking about what are some of my more memorable gifts given to me during the holidays, I really loved the year that you made the decision to go to mm, University of Wisconsin Eau Claire and you gave me a sweatshirt because I was so worried you were going to go far away. And I'm like, oh, God, I can't even bear to think what it would be like to have you like halfway across the country. So I was so excited when you decided to go to Eau Claire. And so that sweatshirt, I love that sweatshirt. Yeah, I had had that. I decided on our tour. (laughs) I never told you that. (laughs) Wow. On our on my college tour at Eau Claire, Jeez. I just felt like thanks for letting me go through so much unnecessary suffering. Yeah, I still had to. I don't know if I I hadn't gotten accepted yet, and so I was waiting on that, and and I liked having the balls in the air just in case. <laughs> but I like pretty much knew on our tour, like just walking around, like. Eau Claire just felt like home. Like it is like mm-hmm. as close as you can get. I'm such a homebody and that is as close as I think I would ever get to feeling like home mm-hmm. being in another state. And so I knew like on that day that I was like, yeah, this is where I'm going to be. Like no other place has felt like this. I don't think I would ever feel like that about somewhere else. And I felt like it in Eau Claire. So 
I had decided that. And then I had to jump through freaking hoops to get that sweatshirt because there's there is a place in Eau Claire that does like all their branding sweatshirts and everything and it does them for pretty cheap so I was like I need to go there to get all of my sweatshirts. I'm glad you took into account my high standards. <laughs> yeah I actually ended up having to get it from the bookstore so it was more expensive than that place <laughs> but I had to have somebody that actually went to that actually was going to school there and lives in Lakeville. I had them buy it and then bring it back here and I was like perfect my gift is set this year and yeah so yeah yeah so it's fun to reflect back on some of your favorite gifts I mm -hmm. was trying to think of what was maybe my worst gift least favorite gift and I would say there have been <laughs> we go. plenty when dad has <laughs> wrapped up something very like dad's gonna stop listening to our podcast domestic right he came in yesterday and he was like oh really you wanted to poke your eyes out <laughs> <laughs> when i was asking you or giving you the rules around making our meals. food challenge yeah our food challenge <laughs> i'm like oh good i'm glad you're listening yeah but one year and he has definitely learned his lesson but not to wrap up domestic type gifts like pots and pans or a vacuum cleaner and then put my name on it like he goes out and buys something that he thinks this household needs and then gifts it to me i'm like what no i don't want this <laughs> and this it's year so crazy so this that... was like this was so long ago when he did this this was probably second to the snowmobile helmet. <laughs> I don't remember I got, that. I don't even think you guys were born yet and I got a snowmobile helmet. <laughs> um, I don't have a snowmobile to ride, nor do I want to. <laughs> Why did he get you a snowmobile helmet? I have no idea. It's probably still sitting out in the garage. <laughs> but one year he gave me, I can't remember, it was like pots and pans or something. And I was like, oh, okay, thank you and he got an earful and so this year when we were shopping at costco just recently he said i really want to replace our pans and i'm like don't you dare <laughs> buy them and put my name on them and he started laughing he's, oh no i've learned my lesson nice i've gotten this is funny because you've done this you've given this as a gift but i've gotten like a picture of somebody as a gift <laughs> what do you in mean? a frame. <laughs> oh, well, it's not like that's the only gift. It's got to be like a side gift, <laughs> yeah. an appetizer to the gifts. <laughs> yeah, but I'm pretty sure I remember you giving that gift to dad. <laughs> it's a framed picture of, of what? You. <laughs> Of me? Yes. No. Yes. Never. No. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. It sat on his desk for so long. I think it might still be there. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, it's a picture that you that was taken of you that went on the cover of a magazine. So you were very proud of it, but you framed no. it. Yes, you did. No, you are yes, totally you making did. this up. No, I'm not. I oh, if Dad was here. <laughs> <laughs> well, he can tell you in two weeks when he listens to this. But, okay. So, I think we've kind of covered a lot of different types of gifts. Like, you talked about the experience. And it's so interesting mm -hmm. how we have such a diverse, like, type of gifting that we do, depending on which family we are engaging with. So, like... Brian and Lois's family, we have been doing more experiences. So instead of exchanging material things, we as a family go do an experience. So mm -hmm. we're, we're going to do that again this year. Mm -hmm. Last year, we took their family to Top, Top Golf. Golf, which was super fun. Mm -hmm. And so we're still putting thought to it. And if she, we don't want to tell what the ideas are because she might be listening. <laughs> yeah. But then there are homemade gifts, which apparently you do not appreciate. What do you mean? like pictures in a frame <laughs> <laughs> but they can be very I meaningful do appreciate to people them. I do are appreciate a little bit them. more considerate no, I... <laughs> she's not 
making my case in point that she definitely gave a picture of herself as a gift. Yes, she did. <laughs> yes, she did. No, I think it is a nice gift. I think it's cute. And, and I do know that like people do that a lot. Like couples will put pictures of them together in a frame. But I just, it's cute when you do it of yourself. <laughs> I did not do that. Oh my God. <laughs> Okay, so how about a gift of service? Of service. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like doing like massages and stuff like that. Well, I mean, that's paying for somebody <laughs> else to give a service. <laughs> what do you, oh, somebody doing something for you? Yeah, like you would give me <laughs> the gift of cleaning my closet. Oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't but, ask me for that. But I'll pay for somebody to give you a massage. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I would definitely rather pay for somebody else to do it. I feel like experiences, like doing something with somebody, that is my favorite type of gift. Mm -hmm. I definitely would much rather have that over any material thing. A hundred percent. I feel like when I think of things that I want, I especially now being out of college, I feel like now it's so much more meaningful and valuable to me to have things to do with somebody. Yeah, I agree. I think time has become so precious yeah. that those are the moments that you cherish and now material things, unless they're Jimmy Choo sunglasses. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Don't let her fool you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think I do enjoy experiences and spending time with people and I'm just trying to think, are there any other people that we do experiences with? I don't know. We used to like with the, with our nieces and nephews every Christmas, we would go do something of course living in minnesota it's usually very cold so we would do mm -hmm. ice skating or sledding mm -hmm. or snowshoeing or um, yeah we did that one year for your side of the family where everybody gave each other experiences it mm -hmm. wasn't necessarily something that you did with them but yeah. something that they could do and yeah. you could go with them if they wanted you to <laughs> yeah and then i think there's some great gift ideas in we talked about like handmade gifts or or putting together a picture in a frame. But you could also think about baked goods. You could think about... Yeah, I would say the handmade stuff is definitely not my forte. <laughs> yeah, really mine either. I, when I first met dad, I was learning how to knit. When I, I was actually at the ad agency. <laughs> and during lunch, all of us gals like would learn something new. And so... Mm -hmm that year it happened to be knitting and it was really fun it was probably one of the first times i actually because i'm just not a creative person in that regard mm -hmm. and so i was so proud of myself so literally everybody i knew got a knit <laughs> washcloth <laughs> <laughs> which kind of looked like I a, totally was alive for this, right? Which kind of looked like a potholder. I remember this. Yeah, Lois, Lois recently <laughs> said something about the washcloth oh potholder coaster. <laughs> I'm sure not. it was made with the highest quality of yarn, too. Oh my god, that is so funny. Yeah. So <laughs> you thought a potholder was a good gift for me? It wasn't a potholder, it was a washcloth but it could be used. It was multi-purpose. Oh my God, that's so funny. But you could, some people love baklava, things like that. Yes. Nut, or not nutmeg, eggnog. Um, yeah, our, you know. our friend and hairstylist made us a box of baklava, which I had no idea what that was, but it's what- Delicious, it's e a Greek. It's a Greek dessert. dessert. Yeah. It is, it is really good, mm -hmm. um, but that's what she gave us for yeah, Christmas. Yeah, and the time that it takes to make baklava yeah, it doesn't look easy. is extraordinary. So, yeah, I, I mean, those kind of gifts are, you're talking about the investment of time that yeah. somebody, especially with somebody who doesn't have a lot of time on her hands. So mm -hmm. I so appreciate that. Um, talk about maybe some digital gifts. Obviously, we're living in the age of technology and 
artificial intelligence and all the things. <laughs> and so one of the ideas that twice I have come across recently is putting your digital, like your Starbucks barcode mm -hmm. in a text, or if you are so daring to put it in social media yeah. and do a random act of kindness and allow people to use that barcode mm -hmm. to pay for their drink. I've seen that done several times and I think that's a cute idea. Yeah, that is cute. And I've had, I think both people actually said, just send me a text with the picture of you with your drink. You could really do that with any gift card, I think. Yeah, any digital a... gift card. Yeah, you just would send the barcode wherever. Yeah. And then as long as it's preloaded. Right. Yeah. But yeah, it is that is a really cute idea, I feel like. So, I think that gift giving obviously is such a rewarding action. And I think that if you make a decision ahead of time about how it is that you want to feel as you are going through that whole process, it can be even more rewarding. I think those of us who give a lot of gifts or enjoy giving gifts, maybe take it for granted on how we can kind of 10 X those emotions that are associated with gift giving. And mm -hmm. instead of really hanging your hat or hinging your happiness on whether they like it or whether you're going to be happy based on what their reaction is, just decide ahead of time that this is going to be a super fun experience regardless. And when you come at it from that angle and that's the mindset and the perspective you have, the receiver is going to align with you. Mm -hmm. They can't help but align with you. Mm -hmm. But if you're sitting there nervous about and second guessing and doubting the idea or whether they're gonna like it, it's very likely that they're gonna pick up on that as well. And yeah, um, it's funny because I feel like even though I, I really like giving gifts, it takes me so long to pick out gifts. I don't consider myself a good gift not good gift giver, but creative when it comes to thoughtful gifts. And so then I sit and dwell on what's going to be the most thoughtful gift I can give somebody. And I feel like that ruins the whole experience. And to your point, it ruins actually giving it to them too. I feel like I then get overwhelmed with all of the things that I think I could give them and then I end up just picking something random that I'm like second guessing it afterwards or like when I'm giving it to them. And so I feel like it, if you go into it with the mindset of this is something that like is meaningful to me, mm -hmm. no matter what the and gift I'm gonna is, enjoy yeah, the and I'm going to enjoy the experience of picking yeah. it out and yeah. thinking about the person. It's more than just the act of buying it, wrapping it, handing it over. Mm -hmm. It's more about, and I think that's why they say the, it's the thought that counts because mm -hmm. you're really thinking of the person as you're going through this whole process, but it's not because you want necessarily the person to feel thought about. Yeah. That's a byproduct. It's so that you have an enjoyment so that it becomes mm -hmm. something that you want to do again. It's mm -hmm. an enjoyable process. Yeah. So that's why we don't go out buying gifts for people that we don't like. Yeah, that's true. Unless you get them in a secret Santa. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah. So if picky gift receivers, like <laughs> someone. <laughs> I love the picture Just... you're painting. <laughs> Just go into it, enjoying the process of giving them whatever it is that you want to give them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. And then their reaction to it won't matter. <laughs> oh my gosh. Have I ever had a bad reaction to a gift to that dads? you've given me? Maybe to dads, but that's different. <laughs> I'm talking to people like the dads in the world that have picky wives. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> yeah, I would say for those really hard to buy for people, 
if you think about maybe some of the the philanthropic side of gift giving where what is meaningful to this person so many people have causes that they deeply <laughs> deeply care about and that's another great way to gift i know like my aunt and uncle they are huge supporters of the humane society and they want anybody who wants to buy them a gift they want a donation to the humane society so mm -hmm. i think that's, that's cute yeah i think that's really cool it's just there's such a diverse way to think about gift giving and i think hopefully we've inspired you to think a little bit differently yep and that you are all excited and ready for the holidays anything else you want to tell the audience <laughs> <what> they... <laughs> just i'm just being honest <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> You're going to get a lump of coal in your stocking. Ooh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we will see you guys next week, the week of Christmas. That would be. Yep, it would be. It would actually be Christmas Day. Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. All right. Take care.